All right. I've been putting off making a video about remote ID, but the time has come for me to bite the bullet and put modules on my fleet. As someone that has a business flying drones, I'm not going to risk losing my Part 107 or my business over it. So in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at these remote ID modules, and then I'm going to show you how to install this one gram remote ID module in a Cinewo. <laughs> So most of the FPV projects that I film and that we film at New England Drone Tours are on Cinewhoops like this and Cinelifters like this. The Cinelifters are big and they can pretty much use any remote ID module that I want since weight isn't that much of an issue. But when it comes to the smaller drones like this one, it's much more difficult, especially with a drone like this that I'm trying to keep under the 250 gram limit. The module that has always stuck out to me is the Drone Tag BS or Basic Solution. I'm pretty sure this is the smallest and cheapest option available. This thing costs $89, it weighs only one gram, and is capable of broadcast remote ID. This is the smallest module on the market that'll make your drone completely remote ID compliant. So here we have the Drone Tag Beacon and the Drone Tag Mini. The Drone Tag Mini is their most expensive module and their largest. It comes in at $329 and weighs about 32 grams. This module offers network and broadcast remote ID. I'm not gonna get into the whole technical side of remote ID, but network remote ID pretty much uses LTE or the same network as most cell phones to transmit data from the module. This gives the module very long range and the data is kept in the cloud. Since this module is on the larger side and has network remote ID on board, I'll probably end up using this on one of my long range drones. In addition to the drone tag mini in the box, you get some stickers, you get some Velcro and a firmware recovery uh, dongle. And then up here is a charging cable. And all of the instructions are right on the top of the box. The drone tag beacon on the other hand is smaller, comes in at $219 and weighs only 17 grams. This has only broadcast remote ID built in. The beacon and the BS module, this little guy right here, this is the main one that I'm gonna be featuring in this. Um, but these two both have broadcast remote ID, whereas this one has broadcast and network. So broadcast remote ID is the minimum that you need to be compliant, so either one of these will do. Also in the box with the drone tag beacon, same thing as the mini, you get a charging cable some Velcro sticker and a prep pad. And then just like the other one, you get the instruction manual right here. Both the Beacon and the Mini have their own internal power supply and internal antennas, and they're pretty damn easy to set up on the Drone Tag app. You pretty much power it on, open up the app, and you're able to connect. To show you how to get it all set up on the app, we're gonna be installing the BS on a Cinewhoop, and I'll show you how to get it all hooked up. All right, so now we're gonna focus on the BS module. We'll take a closer look at it, I'll show you how easy it is to install on a drone, and then we'll hop outside and test it. So here's the BS module in comparison to a micro SD card. The thing is extremely small, this weighs only one gram, and I really think this is the best option available for FPV. When you order the BS module, you'll get a couple things. You'll get a bag with the BS module in it. You'll also get some heat shrink in there. You'll also get two separate antennas, one for GPS, one for Bluetooth. And then you'll also get two different power cables. This one with four wires is the one that I'm gonna be using because I wanna use the BS also as a GPS. If you don't wanna use the module as a GPS on your drone, you can use the three pin cable and you'll only have to connect two of these wires. Drone Tag also sells a couple additional accessories for the Drone Tag BS. They sell this little case right here and this will pretty much just hold the module in it right like this and then there's also a little cover. I don't know where mine went, um, but there's a little cover that goes on here. Plug it in and the antennas pop out the side and then you also get this little tiny battery. So if you don't wanna do any soldering and you just wanna have a very small uh, remote ID module for your drone or an airplane or something, you can get these things, put it all in one. And then they also have this little charger so this is what you would use to charge that battery. Drone Tag also sells this upgraded antenna for the BS. I have noticed that I get a much faster satellite lock when I use this antenna. The included antennas work pretty well though. But if you're using this on a fixed wing or something where you have the space to mount this, this is actually a pretty nice antenna. And on this side you have some sticky tape so you can just kind of stick it to what you need. And then you have remote ID. So looking at the BS, we have our two UFL antenna connectors up top. These are labeled. You have Bluetooth on this side. There's a little BT right here. And then over here, there's GNSS. So this is the GPS. Don't mix up those wires because you will get terrible reception. You probably won't even get satellite lock, um, but you got Bluetooth right here, GPS on this side. 
On the bottom, we have our two power plugs. On this side is the four pin connector. This is the one that I'm gonna be using. And this has our input, ground, RX and TX pins. And then right here is a three pin connector. And this side is for if you wanted to use that little included battery, this plugs in right here. I'm not gonna plug it in because I don't have the antennas connected, but the battery would plug into this one and you could just use the battery or they do include that other wire where if you don't wanna use GPS, um, you can just use this connector to power it. On the opposite side, we have a little indicator light right up here. That's gonna tell you the status of the BS module. Over here is a barometer. These look like pads that you could solder to, but drone tag says don't solder to them, so we're not gonna be touching those. So the drone that I'm gonna be installing this on is this uh, three inch Cinewhip. This has a Speedy B flight controller in it, I believe. So we'll be taking this cover off and I'm gonna show you guys how to solder it. I'm just gonna be using a five volt source. The drone tag BS takes 3.3 to 17 volts of power input. So you can use um, pretty much a one to four S LiPo. I'm gonna be using a five volt source cause I think that's gonna be the most stable. I'm not gonna be using this cable. So I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna mainly just be using this four pin cable right here. All right, so got the heat shrink antennas. Again, these are labeled, so make sure you're using the right uh, antenna for the right thing. This is the GPS wire. The GPS wire has a gray base. Right there. The other one has a black base. So a GPS goes on this side. Clicks down. And then Bluetooth right here. Perfect. All right, so this is my second time filming this. Uh, the first time that I put this on the drone, I noticed that I didn't get any satellite lock. So when you plug this in, you'll notice that there is a LED up here that's gonna flash yellow. Actually, I'm gonna plug a battery in so you can see this. I'm gonna plug this battery in over here. So now this LED just stays yellow. Once you get a GPS lock, it's gonna flash white. And that's gonna mean that it's broadcasting remote ID information. So I originally installed this on the drone right like this with the antennas both just sticking up and I wasn't able to get satellite lock at all. Drone tag recommends putting the antennas at a 90 degree orientation like that. And then you do get satellite lock a lot faster because the antennas aren't interfering with each other. Obviously, when we go to put this on the drone, we're gonna be putting heat shrink around it. So we can't really put heat shrink around an antenna that's at a 90 degree angle like that. You just can't do it. Um, so what I was doing is I actually continue to rotate the antenna a little bit more so it's poking out the bottom. So now we have the GPS antenna coming out here and then the Bluetooth antenna coming out here. And this actually gets just as fast satellite lock as it did when this antenna was rotated like that. So I'm gonna put the antenna right like this. And now we can take our plug, which is this one right here. Again, I'm using the four pin plug and this just plugs in right like this. And now I'll put the heat shrink over it. There we go. So now we have our BS module ready to go into the drone. Let's take the drone apart and I'll show you how to install it. So the BS module supports 3.3 to 17 volts. So I'm just gonna hook it up to a five volt pad and I'm gonna use those two middle wires, the green and yellow wires for TX and RX because this can double as a GPS. So I'm gonna be using five volt right here, ground, and then we have T1 and R1. So I'm gonna be soldering the middle wires to those two pads and that's gonna double as a GPS. All right, so now for these pins, yellow goes to TX and green goes to RX. And do the yellow one first. And now green goes to RX. Perfect. So now our remote ID module is hooked up to the drone. So now just find a way to secure your BS module in the middle of the drone and then we'll put the cover back on, we'll plug it in and see if we can get satellite lock. All right, so now I'll show you how to get this set up in the drone tag app. With drone tag open, I'm gonna plug a battery into my drone. I can see that there's a yellow LED on the BS module. So I'm gonna go on the drone tag app over to my devices, register new, and the BS module is gonna pop right up. Click that, we'll hit confirm, we'll skip this. 
you can create aircrafts in the drone tag app. So since I have like an entire fleet of these drones, I can create um, every single drone that I have in here and associate it with the drone tag remote ID modules. So if we go into BS, the first thing you wanna do, you can see GNSS, we don't have GPS right now. So it has remote ID, it's active. I can see that we still have a yellow LED on here. First thing you wanna do is go under here and hit assisted GNS AGNSS. Checking status and you just update it. From what I understand, it's gonna take GPS data from the phone, push it to the module, and that's gonna help you get a faster satellite lock. So right now I'm indoors, I'm not really near a window. So we'll see how long this takes to start up. All right, so I just got satellite lock, so we can see a flashing white LED on here. Hopefully you guys can see that up here. Once you have a white flashing LED, that means that the BS module will be seen as in flight and it's broadcasting remote ID information and you will have GPS going into the flight controller. I'm not gonna show you how to set this up as a GPS. It's pretty straightforward, just like a regular GPS, just select what UART you installed it to and then scroll down to GPS, turn it on and you'll be able to use this as a GPS. So now on the screen, we're gonna have a bunch more details. Um, you can then take your serial number and you can link that to your FAA profile so whatever registration you have on this drone you can link this remote id module with that and you will be all set you won't get arrested go to jail so i'm gonna unplug this because i don't want this to overheat all right so now that we know that this is broadcasting remote id and we've got gps signal going into the flight controller this thing's ready to go so let's take this out to a field and we'll see how it performs
So there you go. That's a little bit about drone tags modules and how to install the drone tag BS on a Cinewhoop. I do plan on putting one of those real pit power switches on all of my drone tag BS remote ID modules because most of my flights are indoors and indoor flights aren't regulated by the FAA. So when I'm flying indoors for a real estate listing or inside an office building or anything, I want to be able to turn off the remote ID module with a switch on my controller. So if you guys want to see how to do that with a drone tag BS like this, keep an eye out for my build video on this little Cinewhoop right here. This is a custom built two inch Cinewhoop that I built on the QAV frame by Lumineer. I've been using this drone for tons of projects, mainly because it's capable of carrying a naked GoPro, has a DJI 03 on board, it's under 250 grams liftoff weight with a battery, and a naked GoPro and it has remote ID on a switch. This thing is sick. I'm not going to go over all the details on this one yet, but putting remote ID on a switch will be covered in a build video for this little beast in a couple months, so keep an eye out for that. But that's going to pretty much do it for this video, guys. Uh, shout out to Drone Tag for sending me these modules. I ordered one of these and then they ended up sending me these ones just to include in my video. If you're trying to just put remote ID on an FPV drone, I would definitely go with the BS. If you need one for a larger drone, you could go with the BS and use that little enclosure to save some weight. Or you could go with the Beacon or the Mini since these ones have a built-in battery and can Velcro or strap onto just about any drone. So if this video helped you out, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave the video a like, and if you have any questions about these Drone Tag modules, leave a comment down below. This is where I've been keeping this one. Boom.